This is what 1600 looks like. If someone solved 1600 physics problems, you might guess that they understood basic physics principles pretty well. But not necessarily. A while back, a group of students were studying for the physics college entrance exam in Korea. And a group of researchers asked these students to solve qualitative physics problems. They basically gave these students a short test on their knowledge of physics concepts. With these qualitative problems, there's no math, there's no numbers, there's nothing like that. It's just, here's the situation, and you tell me what's going to happen next. And, and, you know, maybe you would justify that with some physics knowledge. The results of this study found that there was absolutely no correlation between the number of problems that students solved and their actual understanding of physics principles. Why? So the first thing that students have to do when they come across a workbook problem is to identify the kind of problem that it is. So they're looking for features of the question that tell them what kind of problem this is. In the same way that we identify dog species by looking for certain features on the dog. Right? After that, they need to think about the formulas they know, or the algorithms they know, and match the appropriate formula to the problem as they've identified it. And then they just need to follow the steps, you know, fill in the information that they have, and rearrange some things to find the missing information that they need. And so they just follow this series of steps, and maybe at the end they do some kind of uh, checking if they're very diligent. This process is quite different than the process that students go through when solving the conceptual problems or the qualitative problems. So when they confronted the qualitative problems, what the students have to do is they have to build a mental model of the situation as they read it. So they read the problem or maybe they see a diagram and they have to build uh, a situation of the various forces that are going on in that problem in their head then they have to kind of play out that model. So they have to like run the simulation, like run a mental simulation and figure out what's going to happen next and probably justify their predictions based on, on what they know about physics. In other words, there is procedure mode. That is when you are trying hard to follow a bunch of steps correctly. And there is conceptual mode. That is when you are thinking about a situation in your head. When you're in procedure mode, the main goal is to follow the steps correctly. Um, but this process of following the steps correctly tends to impair conceptual insight, deeper conceptual insight into the problem that you're working on. There's a couple of studies on this that uh, I will put in the description below, but I should probably just make another video about that idea because it kind of deserves its own video. Anyhow, ideally you want both, right? You want to be able to solve the workbook questions. You want to be able to identify a problem and apply the right formula and find the right number that you need to find at the end of the day. I, I think, you know, our bridges would be a lot less stable if we couldn't do that. But you also want to be able to apply your knowledge flexibly in areas that don't necessarily call for a specific number. So how can we avoid the trap that these students fall into? I think there's two reasonable things to do. One is very straightforward. Just solve more qualitative problems. Apply physics concepts to situations that are not these like stereotypical workbook problems. That is going to deepen your understanding of physics and it's going to kind of work your knowledge in a different way. The second thing to do is that even when you're working on one of these problems that is asking you to say, you know, apply a formula and follow a series of steps to find the number at the end of the problem, is to make uh, an estimate at the beginning of what would a reasonable answer be in this situation, or try to understand what is happening in this situation first before kind of jumping right into the formula, the steps, and all that. Uh, I just think that will give you practice at thinking about these problems more conceptually. And it might also, just as a side benefit, help you identify calculation mistakes and that kind of thing. That's it. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment and hit that like button. Thanks.